Do you know Jen makes us age faster? Or that by 2050, one in four adults in the UK will be over the age of 65 and potentially suffering the negative impacts of this early aging? I know it's something that I want to avoid. I'm sure it's something that many of you do too. So today I'm talking about inflammation. This is chronic low level inflammation that contributes towards accelerated aging and increases our risk for the major chronic diseases. But I've also got seven evidence based strategies to help inflammation, helping us with our health now and for years to come. First up, we just need to move more. Did you know that adults should have a minimum of 150 minutes of moderate aerobic style exercise every week? And unfortunately, only 10% of the UK population aged over 65 is able to meet this minimum requirement. Exercise has a strongly promoting anti-inflammatory effect and helps reduce our weight too, which also decreases inflammation. And just 20 minutes of brisk walking has been shown to have a really powerful anti-inflammatory effect. In addition to this, regular activities throughout the day, simple things like standing at a desk rather than sitting, or taking brief breaks every hour throughout the day for a couple of minutes, doing a bit of movement, can have really big benefits decreasing our inflammation. Tip number two is to maintain a healthy weight and ideal hip to waist ratio. This is because it's fat stored around our internal organs, known as visceral fat, and this is a big driver of inflammation. It's because visceral fat is different from the subcutaneous fat that we see under our skin that we may not like the look of. Visceral fat, you see, actually produces hormones and cytokines, which send signaling throughout our body that stimulate inflammation. And it's all driven by an excess of energy. Visceral fat in particular is produced when we have a high sugar diet. So keeping the sugar down is a key way to avoid this. And as I mentioned, looking at your hip to waist ratio gives us a good indication of how much visceral fat that you have. For women, an ideal ratio is less than 0.85 hip to waist ratio measurement. Whilst for men, it's anything less than 0.9. So reducing consumption of ultra processed foods, decreasing sugar and having a diet that's high in whole unprocessed foods is a good way that we can help manage this. Next on the list is a simple one, but with many benefits, and that's eat more fruits and vegetables. First up, it's because they contain a lot of fiber, which can help us feel full for longer, aiding point number two in terms of decreasing our body weight and hip to waist ratio. Secondly, the fiber that they contain helps feed our bacteria in our gut. And this is a couple of benefits to it. Firstly, it helps promote the growth of good, healthy bacteria, which coincidentally then decreases the growth of bad bacteria, which can produce and contributing towards inflammation throughout our body. Secondly, the promotion of the good bacteria enables them to produce peptides and other factors which support optimum gut health help restore the integrity of our gut lining and produce other metabolites like short chain fatty acids, which also contribute towards decreased inflammation. And the polyphenol content in fruit and veg also directly reduces inflammation. And through its antioxidant properties, the polyphenol content helps reduce the buildup of free radicals in our otherwise contribute towards increased aging and increased inflammation. And we can see some of these wider effects in the Mediterranean diet, which is really rich in fruits and vegetables and is known to be associated with a decreased risk of inflammation and for the chronic diseases associated with aging. There's also probiotics found in foods like kombucha, kefir and sauerkraut, which have a really positive effect on our gut bacteria and promote anti-inflammation too. Our tip number four to decrease your risk of inflammation is to avoid those ultra processed foods. These foods are often high in calories, high in sugar and unhealthy fats, contributing towards increased weight gain and inflammation, not a range of potentially toxic compounds they contain which also contribute towards inflammation. So you really want to focus on eating minimally processed foods to optimize your health 
and avoid foods with long ingredients lists full of chemical sounding names. And the big one to avoid are the seed oils. These are things like rapeseed oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, soybean oil. These are all extremely rich in omega-6 fatty acids, which get stored by the cells of our body and create a massive predisposition towards inflammation, particularly given the ratio we have at the moment in omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory, and omega-6, which is pro-inflammatory, is so heavily weighted towards omega-6, they're found in nearly all processed foods you can pick up off a shelf. And some of those whole food based sources include omega-3 found in the oily fish and walnuts and flax seeds for example is strongly anti-inflammatory. You've got curcumin found in the spice turmeric, there's ginger, there's ECGC which is a compound found in green tea and the spice cinnamon all of which are really anti-inflammatory. And next on our list is managing stress. This is because chronic stress strongly promotes inflammation due to the effect that stress has on hormones like cortisol. Strategies to aid this can include social exercise, mindfulness and connecting with others, which can all be great ways to reduce our stress and decrease the inflammation that it causes. Spending time in nature is a really big one for decreasing our stress and it seems like the greater the natural diversity, the greater the reduction in stress. So the more trees, the more plants, the more animals or the more water that we can experience whilst being in nature, the greater the reduction of our stress is likely to be. And if we can combine this with some grounding, that's walking barefoot or being in direct contact with the earth, we can reduce our inflammation even further. The sixth tip is to connect with others, as social isolation plays a huge role in inflammation. So connecting with our friends, families, co-workers, or anyone in our community can all have a really positive effect on our stress, mental and physical well-being, which coincide with the reduction in inflammation. And within this, loneliness seems to have a strongly promoting effect on inflammation. Now, it's key to remember here that both loneliness and social isolation have got a subjective element to them. So what works for somebody else might not work for you because you might view how you see others in a different light. It's all about finding connection with others, however that may be, which is why the digital space can also be another way to engage in meaning if you're unable to have physical connection too. It doesn't mean that you have that one-to-one -one physical connection to decrease your social isolation or loneliness. And last up, there are some supplements that you might want to consider adding into your diet in the whole foods form or as an extract to decrease inflammation and help reduce your chances of that accelerated aging from inflammation. Now we need to remember that inflammation comes in many different forms, but just to be clear, inflammation is absolutely vital for our survival. It's the chronic, low-grade, persistent inflammation that we want to try and avoid. The one that we can fight back against with effective lifestyle choices if we want to live as long as possible in the best possible health and decrease inflammation. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe below. We release daily videos on health and longevity optimization.